Let's talk about Roadside Picnic. This is the second story and the only novel that you'll be reading in this course. And it's one that I really enjoy uh, sharing with people who have not read it before. It's a story that is kind of famous with hardcore sci-fi fans, but obscure enough that many people who've read a lot of sci-fi have not actually read it. And it has an interesting history. So this book was written in the 70s by the brothers Arkady and Boris Strugatsky. And they had the daunting task of getting this book published and getting it improved by the Soviet censors. Uh, during the period when Russia was the Soviet Union, uh, their government did not have uh, freedom of speech. And so books and material that were supposed to be published had to be approved by government censors. And those censors didn't like the original version of Roadside Picnic. It was too dark. It was too hopeless. And you may notice a little bit that, you know, the story is set in Harmont, which I think people speculate is in Canada, and it does have some anti-capitalist themes. Uh, that is partially because that would please the Soviet censors. There's also the aspect where you're not reading the version that passed the censors. You're reading the post-Soviet version uh, that is the Strugatsky brothers' intended version of the book. So it's a weird mix of stuff that was designed with the censors in mind and stuff that was, well, stuff that didn't pass the censors in the first place and had to be revised and then was later released um, in this version. I really like Roadside Picnic because it doesn't remind me of any other science fiction stories that I've read. I think I noted in my previous video that it was the inspiration for the Andrei Tarkovsky film Stalker, and it was the inspiration for the video game series Stalker. Um, I think a lot of people play those things and you know, play Stalker or watch the film, and they don't even know that it's based on Roadside Picnic. One of the things I find so fascinating about this book is that the characters are not really scientists. There are scientist characters in the book that explains some stuff to us, but you'll see that they are not the primary focus. The primary focus of the book are stalkers, and Red is the, the main stalker, the main character of the book. In the world of Roadside Picnic, aliens visited Earth, an alien civilization stopped by quickly. They were gone before we realized that they were here. It was a very brief stay on our planet. But in the places where they arrived and the places where they stayed for their brief stint, they left behind a bunch of technology. They just sort of left it around on the ground. And in those areas where they were, the physics of those spaces actually changed. People speculate that the book has something to do with Chernobyl, the nuclear meltdown in the Ukraine, um, and how that is a partitioned zone, because the areas where the aliens land in this book are called zones. The this book was older than Chernobyl, so even if there are some similarities there, it seems like the, uh, the Strugatsky brothers had their idea before the nuclear meltdown. So in this story, Red, the main character, he's a stalker. His job <laughs> is to sneak into the zones which people are not allowed in because they are super deadly, and he tries to retrieve the alien technology that's lying around in order to sell it on the black market. The characters' concerns in this story are more like the concerns of everyday people. Crazy fantastic stuff happens to them, but they still sort of need to focus on paying the rent and being able to provide for their families. These aren't the scientists of Arthur C. Clarke's stories, you know, who are great adventurers and experts on propulsion technology. These are not the distant future uh, characters that you find in Asimov or the ambassadors of Ursula Le Guin. These are characters that live in squalor or close to it. These are characters who do not have a great amount of money or influence, and they are characters who are taking advantage of a situation that presents itself to them, the, the zones and the alien technology. So, I have two questions about this book. One you will respond to in the first week, and the other that you'll respond to in the second week. Because I split it up. It's, it's not that long. It's like a hundred and something pages. But just for your convenience, I want you to be able to enjoy and think about the book and not have to rush through it. So 
I split it up into two weeks. The first week, I'm going to ask you, who are the people that live around the zone? Who are the people that work around the zone? How do they relate to the alien technology? How do they relate to the zone? How did the Strugatsky brothers create a society that is impacted by this alien visitation? What are these people's roles? What do they do? And thinking about that, um, I think will lead us to our second question. One of the things I really like about this book is that it somewhat resembles a literary genre called realism. That doesn't mean to say that this book is realistic. Uh, as you'll see, there are things in this book that are not realistic at all. However, if you've read something like The Red Badge of Courage by uh, Stephen Crane or some of Edith Wharton's work, some of the, the writing around the turn of the century, that was when realism was a major trend in American literature, in European literature, or I should say Western European literature. Science fiction often cared more about the big fantasy effects, the aliens, the people being afraid of technology, fear of change, fear of science, fear of technology. And the characters were often there to, you know, sort of usher us into these conversations. In Roadside Picnic, I feel, as a reader, and you may agree or disagree with me, that the brothers Strugatsky cared somewhat about realism. They wanted us to feel like these are people you could actually meet. They wanted us to feel like this maybe is what would actually happen if aliens visited Earth and contaminated some zones with their technology. They are using real patterns of human behavior as a way to think about how we would deal with an extraordinary event like an alien visitation. So my second question is, do you agree with me? Do you think this could be a work of science fiction realism? Again, obviously, there's stuff in here that is not realistic at all. But realism is a genre or a type of writing where the characters, the conflicts, the concerns, the social constructs, these things resemble what would really happen or what does really happen in society. Um, so if you think that this book is an example of scientific realism, as I do, explain your answer. If you don't, that's interesting too. Explain your answer in that way. Uh, you don't have to agree with me to get credit on the, the response. You just have to give me a good thorough description of your, uh, your thoughts and explain them with evidence from the story, evidence from the book. And I'm interested to read what you think. I hope you dig this book because I really like this book.